In this video, we're going to go into more detail about electron configurations. So we first introduced electron configurations in the last video. So when I, when I say electron configurations, I'm talking about like, you know, for hydrogen, it's electron configuration is going to be 1s1. For helium, it's electron configuration is 1s2, right? It's a simple notation to be able to denote how many electrons are in a given subshell, right? So I want to go through a few more examples and go into more detail about electron configurations. One thing that's going to be important uh, that electron configurations will be able to elucidate are the valence electrons for a given atom. And so valence electrons are going to be the electrons that are located in the outermost principal quantum level. And these are going to be really important in chemistry because those tend to be the electrons that are involved in chemistry. When reactions happen, the electrons that are donated or received or, or lost or gained are always from the outermost principal quantum level. So the valence electrons are going to be very important to be able to identify, classify, and, and be able to denote their properties, right? So for example, right, if we take carbon, for example, right? We know that carbon has six total electrons. So if we use everything that we've learned at this point to build up the electron configuration, then we know that we'll place two electrons in the, um, in the one S, right? We'll place two electrons in the two S and then we'll place the last two electrons in the two P. Now, if we were to highlight the valence electrons, the valence electrons for carbon are going to be these four that are in the outermost principal quantum level, right? So when we're writing out electron configurations, denoting the valence electrons are going to be very important. There's gonna be certain rules to this and things that we'll have to get used to, right? So um, let's take in another example. So let's do argon. Right, so argon is actually gonna have 16 total electrons or 18 total electrons, right? So if we know that argon is going to have 18 total electrons, then we're going to have to put a lot of electrons in a lot of orbitals. So we just got to get started, right? So 1s2, um, that's the first two electrons. We got 16 more to go. So we got 2s2, right? Now for the 2p, we know that there are three orbitals and each orbital can hold two electrons. So we can put six total electrons in the 2p. So we're gonna do that, right? Now we have to go to the next principal level because remember, there's no d orbital in the second shell. So we have to go to the next principal level. So now we place the next ones in the 3s. So 3s2, 3p6. And that's gonna be your electron configuration for argon. If we wanted to highlight the valence electrons here again, would be the electrons in the third principal shell, 3s, uh, the two in the 3s, and the six in the 3p. Now, one thing that we should note here is that it will be very arduous to constantly have to write out for every single atom, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, continuing to write this out on and on and on, right? Um, so what we've invented as chemists is a handy notation to be able to um, to uh, write out these electron configurations in an easier way. And that notation is called noble gas notation. Right, so noble gas notation basically uses the previous noble gas to account for the previous electrons, right? So, um, so take this example. So argon is one of the pre the uh, noble gases, right? And the next element down from argon, uh, element nineteen, is going to be potassium, right? So let's look at potassium, right? So for potassium, its electron configuration will be one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, three p six. And then that 19th electron would go into 4s orbital, so you get 4s1. Now, what you'll notice here is that all of this, 1s2 all the way up to 3p6, this is the argon configuration, right? So the way that we rewrite this notation, this electron configuration in noble gas notation, is we'll just put 
this bracket, say argon 4s1, right? So basically this entire configuration is all lumped into this bracketed notation. And so the only thing you have to write is the valence electron, that 4s1, right? So this is a shorthand way to write out the notation uh, for electron configurations, to just use the previous noble, noble gas and then just uh, write out the valence electrons from there. Now, you might be wondering, because there is a 3D orbital that it seems like we just skipped, right? There's a, in the third principal shell, there's an S orbital, 3S, there's a 3P and a 3D. Why did we place this electron in the 4S? Well, the reason that we did that is uh, something called the N plus L rule, right? So it's known as the N plus L rule. Right. Keeping in mind that you're always trying to put these electrons in the lowest energy orbital possible, the orbitals are going to be ordered based on their value of N plus L, right? The N quantum number, the principal quantum number, and the angular momentum quantum number, right? So let's look at this as an example. Let's look at the 4S and the 3D and compare them, right? So if we add N plus L for the 4S, it, for the 4s, n is equal to 4, and l, since it's an s orbital, is equal to 0. So n plus l for the 4s orbital is going to be 4. And let's look at the 3d by contrast, right? So for the 3d, n is equal to 3, and l is equal to 2, right? So that means n plus l for the 3d is going to be 5. So that means the lower energy orbital is actually this 4s orbital. Right. That guy's going to actually be lower in energy than the 3D. So we're going to fill up the 4S orbital before the 3D. Now, if you don't want to check N plus L each time, there's a simple way to remember it. And it's this figure here. Right. So basically what you would do is write out all of the orbitals and stack them vertically just like this. And then you'll draw a diagonal line that starts at each uh, orbital. Right. And from there, that tells you how you're supposed to fill up the orbitals according to the off principle, right? So you'll start with the 1s, then the 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d. So you just keep following this diagonal line down in order to, uh, to figure out how to fill up each orbital. This is basically a visual representation of this N plus L rule, right? Basically ordering these orbitals by their energy, right? Okay, so let's look at a few more examples of electron configurations. Um, let's look at, let's do silicone. So silicone is located right here, it's element 14, right? So that means we're gonna have 14 total electrons here. Using the noble gas notation, right? We can use neon to account for 10 of those electrons, right? So we'll have neon, right? So you got 10 electrons that are already accounted for, and then you'll just place the other electrons in the valence orbitals. So you'll have 3s2, and at this point, we only have two more electrons to account for, so they'll go into 3p, 3p2. Okay, and that's, that's silicone. Okay, let's do gallium next. So gallium is right here element 31, right? So we got 31 electrons that we need to account for. Again, using noble gas notation, we can knock out 18 of these by using argon, which was the previous noble gas. So gallium, its electron configuration is gonna be argon, right? And then the electron, the next electron is gonna go into 4s, right? So we'll have argon, 4s2, Right, so now we got 13 electrons that we need to consider now. So we got the 3D as the next orbital. Keep in mind, like we looked at in the previous video, that there's five possible D orbitals in the D subshell. Each one can hold two electrons. So we can put 10 electrons in this 3D orbital, right? So that accounts for 12 of them. We only got one more to place. So we'll put it into 4P. There we go. Okay, for the last one, um, let's do selenium. 
And selenium, I actually covered it up here. Let's get rid of that line. Selenium's right here. It is element 34, right? So we got 34 total electrons to account for for selenium. Again, using argon as the noble gas that knocks out 18 of them, right? So now we only have to consider 16. So we use, just keep filling them up, 4s2, 3d10, and then we're only left with four more that we have to account for. So we just place those in 4p, so 4p4. Okay, so um, so that's three examples. I mean, we could pick up any um, element on a periodic table and start looking for these electron configurations. Um, it's going to be very important for you to practice these on your own. If, if this is kind of confusing at this point, just start picking out elements and practicing out writing the electron configurations on your own. You can Google these electron configurations, so you can always check and make sure you've got it right. But it's going to be important to make sure you have an understanding of how electrons are distributed in atoms. So making sure you practice this and understand it well is going to be crucial.